Chapter 9, A Deadly Chase Tracing Dracula proved easier than the friends feared. Only one ship had set sail for Transylvania the previous day, and its cargo list included a box of soil. Its first port of call is Varna, on the Black Sea. We can get there faster by train, said Mina. You're not coming, objected Jonathan. It's too dangerous. It's more dangerous if I stay, insisted Mina. Already my teeth are sharper. I'm changing, Jonathan. I dare not be alone. The train journey took three days. The ship was meant to take three weeks, but the weeks passed and there was no sign of it. Something's wrong, said Arthur. I'm going to make inquiries. Next morning, he received a telegram. To Arthur Homewood, ship diverted to Galax. Dracula's avoiding us, exclaimed the professor. When I hypnotised Mina, the mind reading must have worked both ways. We must leave at once. At Galatz, the friends found the ship's captain. A strange journey, he told them. We were making good time until we were blown off course by a terrible storm. And the fog, most of the time we were sailing blind. The crew blamed it all on a wooden box we were carrying. They said it was haunted. What happened to the box? asked the professor anxiously. Some men collected it yesterday said the captain, and good riddance too. I think they were taking it to the river. Look at the map, said Mina. The river goes all the way to the Borgo Pass. Let's split up, said Arthur. Jonathan, Jack, will follow the river. If he's on a boat, we should be able to catch him. Professor, you take Mina and head for the castle to deal with his lair. No, exclaimed Jonathan, shuddering. You don't know what that place is like, full of moonlight and monsters. You can't go there. There is no choice, said Mina, slowly. We must hurry. Jonathan looked closely at his wife. She was very pale and spoke with effort. She is fighting the change, whispered the professor. But it's getting harder. Jonathan bowed his head. So be it, he said. Heaven help us all. As soon as the friends had equipped themselves, they set off. Jonathan, Jack and Arthur rode off along the riverbank, their packs loaded with weapons. Mina and the professor hired a carriage. The carriage sped over the roads, and by nightfall, Mina and the professor were deep among the snowy mountains. When they stopped for the night, the professor pulled out a flask. Holy water, he said. Before they went to sleep, he sprinkled a large circle around them. As the moon rose, three women appeared out of the whirling snow. The carriage horses whinnied in terror. Vampires, muttered the professor. The women drew closer, holding out their arms. Come to us, they called, but when they reached the edge of the circle, they stopped, baffled. Be gone, cried the professor, brandishing, brandishing his crucifix. They snarled and drew back. Then, as the sun climbed over the horizon, they melted away. Mina and the professor reached the castle the next day. By now, Mina was paler than ever. The professor left her in the carriage while he went to find the vault. Inside, there were four tombs. The largest was empty. It bore one word, Dracula. In the other tombs lay three women. They looked so beautiful that the professor hesitated. For Mina, he told himself. He plunged a stake deep into each vampire's heart. They screeched and writhed and fell still. A look of peace stole over their faces. A moment later, they crumbled to dust. Before leaving, the professor sprinkled the whole place with holy water. By the time he got back to the carriage, the sun was low in the sky. In the distance, wolves howled. Then he and Mina heard hoofbeats. They ran to the edge of the cliff and looked down. Far below there was a wagon carrying a box, lurching toward the castle at a crazy speed. Close behind rode Jonathan, Arthur and Jack, their guns at the ready. As they watched, the friends caught up with the wagon and forced it to stop. The men on the wagon pulled out knives and formed a defensive circle. Their leader pointed at the setting sun and laughed. In answer, Jonathan, Arthur and Jack threw themselves forward. Knives flashed and blows fell. Jonathan fought most furiously of all. His enemies fell away before him, and moments later he was beside the box. Jonathan wrenched off the lid. Inside, scattered with soil, lay the count. He was deathly pale and his red eyes glared. As he caught sight of the setting sun, his lips twisted in a triumphant grin. At that very moment, Jonathan's arm swept down, plunging a stake deep into the vampire's heart. Mina thought she saw a look of surprise, and then peace still over Dracula's face. A moment later, 
his body crumbled into dust. The men on the wagon turned and fled. Mina gave a cry and scrambled down the cliff to her husband. As Jonathan gathered her in his arms, he saw the cross-shaped scar had gone, leaving her skin as smooth and pure as a new-fallen snowflake. The curse is broken, he whispered. Arthur rubbed his eyes. The professor put a hand on his shoulder. I know you're thinking of Lucy, he said gently. If only we could have saved her too. But we have rid the world of an ancient evil, and now her soul can truly rest in peace. The end. <laughs>